Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to him forever. I'm Mother Natalia, and this is Mother Ileana. And we are Byzantine Catholic nuns from Christ the Bridegroom Monastery, and this is Pints with Aquinas. On last week's episode, I referenced one of my favorite hymns from the Divine Liturgy, which is called the Cherubicon, or the Trubic Hymn. And I very embarrassingly could not remember the lyrics to the song because I wasn't singing it. And so... I thought that we would have kind of a different sort of episode this week in which I would sing for you this hymn, and I asked Mother Ileana to come and join me because Mother Ileana has a very beautiful harmony that she sings along to this hymn, and the disclaimer that we both wanted to give is neither of us are trained, this is pure vainglory coming out right now, neither of us are trained musicians. And also, we're both asthmatics who have inhalers that restrict our vocal cords, and and some of these are, <laughs> and and some of the phrases in this hymn are long phrases, and so there will be weird breath marks and things like that. But uh, but it's a really beautiful hymn, and um, yeah. So some context. Uh, oh, another disclaimer that actually is important. This hymn. The, the version that we're going to sing is a slightly different translation that we sing in the Ruthenian Byzantine um, liturgy. And so we're singing this version because it's our favorite and it's outside of the context of the liturgy. So in the liturgy, we, we need to use the approved translation. But since we're outside of the context of the liturgy, we are singing our favorite version. <laughs> a little wiggle room there. A little wiggle room. So the... The line that I mentioned in last week's episode that's my favorite line in the hymn and one of my favorite lines for the whole liturgy is the line, now lay aside all earthly cares. And I I think the reason that I really like this line is when we get to this hymn in the liturgy, at this point, when we get to this line, it's kind of this reminder to me of, oh, everything that I've been distracted by in the Divine Liturgy up to this point, I need to now set that aside and refocus and remember that I'm in the Eucharistic Liturgy right now and, and to remember where my where my attention needs to be. And yeah, you had something that you, uh, that you had mentioned when we were talking about this earlier. Yes, when it says, lay aside all cares of life, it's like a wake-up call and I realize how distracted I've been. <laughs> <laughs> and so I then have to make this concerted effort to start paying attention, at least now. Yeah. But something that, as I was praying about this a couple of days ago in preparing for this episode, something that I realized is really beautiful, uh, to me anyways, is... This hymn comes at the point in the liturgy of we're, we're singing this hymn as the priest is preparing the gifts that are not yet consecrated. They're still bread and wine. And he's preparing to bring them around in a procession around the church. And during that procession, so once we finish this hymn, which we sing multiple times, usually it ends up being thrice, but it can be more or less. And when we finish singing the hymn, The priest, as he's processing with the gifts and the deacon and the servers, he, they are um, going through this litany. They're offering up intercessions for all of the different prayers, um, for the different needs of the church, for the people in the church, for the bishop and the priests and the monastics and the lay people and those in the government and and our loved ones. Yeah, the military and I don't know, a bunch that I'm forgetting. The but deceased, the sick, mm-hmm. um, all sorts of intentions. The founders of the church or the founders of the monastery. And and so we're praying for the world um, because it even ends with, and, and all you Christians of the true faith. And um, so we're praying for the world right after we have this hymn in which we have this line, now lay aside all earthly cares. And so... The reason that struck me as beautiful is because it's like the church is not telling us, well, just forget these things that are heavy on your heart. Just totally set them aside and pretend like they don't exist. The church is saying these things that are weighing on your heart, the loved ones that you care for, bring them to the Lord 
and offer them to him and let him take care of it. It's like the reason we don't have to worry or have anxiety or have these cares is because Jesus is carrying them for us, right? Um, It's because the father is a good father who provides for his children. And yeah, so I was just, I was just really moved by that. Um, Yeah. Yeah, In that first line of the second part that we may receive the king of all, it sort of shows me like, this is why we're doing it. We have to sort of declutter Mm -hmm. our interior so that we can receive him and have room for him. So we give him all of our need, and that gives him like a space to enter in when we receive him in the Eucharist. Yeah, so so that second part that Mother Eliana is talking about, so kind of the structure of this is we are going to sing both parts of this hymn all together today, but typically what happens, like how it happens in the liturgy, is we sing this first part, the let us who mystically represent the cherubim and who sing the thrice holy hymn, Now lay aside all earthly cares. Um, And then when we finish that hymn is when the priest processes and the deacon processes with the gifts and they pray for everybody, pray for the world. And then, um, and then we all say amen. And then we start this second part of the hymn as they enter the holy place and continue on with the liturgy and continue on with preparing for the anaphora, the consecration. And and that's the point at which Mother Ileana was saying that we say that we may receive the king of all. Um, and I think the last thing that I'll mention before we just sing the hymn is during that procession, there's this, this really amazing tradition that, so the gifts of the bread, um, It's really just the bread that he's processing with, not the wine. No, no, no. The the wine is the chalices as well. Yeah, yeah. So the gifts are covered. And as the holy things in the church are are covered. And like I said, they're not yet consecrated into the body and blood. There's still the bread and wine during this procession. But traditionally, the people of the church would bake the bread because we use leavened bread in our Eastern churches. And so the people would bake the bread with their intentions in mind. And then they all bring the bread and then the the different loaves are sorted through and the most perfect loaf is chosen, the one that looks the most unblemished because this is going to be the Eucharist. And so we want to offer to the Lord the most, the most perfect of the works of our hands. But because it's covered, nobody knows whose loaf is on the discos, um, the the tray that it's carried around on. And so as, as the priest uh, or the deacon are walking around and carrying the bread specifically, the people will, you'll see sometimes in a Byzantine liturgy, people will, will take the, they'll touch the vestment of the priest and this is coming from this tradition of since nobody knows whose bread that was on the tray, they they would pull the priest to them and whisper their intentions in his ears. And so the priest is also, as he's naming these other intentions, he's also carrying all of our intentions with him in that procession. Um, so... We still do that. Like in our monastery, we'll touch the vestments of the priest as he processes by. And um, and then most of us just silently uh, call to mind the people for whom we're really bringing to this liturgy. Uh, those those cares that we're laying aside, we're laying at the feet of at the feet of Jesus. And yeah. So do you have anything to add, Mother Eliana, before we sing? I think the word invisibly is in this hymn, Mm -hmm. and it just reminds me that when we're receiving the king of all, um, what he's doing in us is invisible. He's the one doing the work in us, and we're just trying to make a space for him to do that, but we're not really aware usually what he's doing. (laughs) So we're going to sing this hymn now, and uh, because this hymn is a prayer, I'm not going to conclude with my normal closing prayer for the episode. So we'll just sing this hymn, and I would encourage you all to 
Um, we're going to be looking down at the paper that we're that we're singing from, and so um, I don't know. Don't watch us. Just close your eyes and receive um, receive what whatever the Lord wants to do in your heart through this hymn. That we may receive this prayer. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Let us who mystically By the angelic 